From Asia News Weekly, this is Asia Now. Today, five South Korean soldiers are dead and one flees. Plus, Korea takes issue with Japan over the Kono Statement Review. Welcome to Asia Now. I'm Steve Miller. Friday evening at approximately 8.15 p.m., a sergeant in the South Korean 22nd Infantry Division near Kosong fired 10 shots with his rifle. Identified as Im, the shooter then fled, taking a rifle, ammunition, and a grenade. Five soldiers are dead after an armed exchange, although it is not known if Im caused the deaths. What is known is that a grenade was used. The five victims include one staff sergeant, a sergeant, a corporal, and two privates. Seven more were wounded with non-life-threatening injuries and are being treated. Eam had recently completed six hours of guard duty and then opened fire. Though the frontline unit is near the border with North Korea, the incident has nothing to do with the communist country, military officials said. Army personnel also mentioned Eam was on the list of service persons who require special attention as he had difficulties in adapting himself to the military life. A massive search is now underway to locate and detain Eam. Unfortunately, this is not the first such incident in recent years. In 2005, an army private set off a hand grenade, killing eight and wounding two. In 2011, a Marine Corps corporal killed four on Ganghua Island. If Eam had such difficulty adapting to military life and had to be watched, one does have to question the Army's decision to station the young man in such a high-stress environment and so close to the North Korean border. Did his duties make him snap? As events unfold, follow Asian News Weekly on Twitter for updates. It's no secret that relations between South Korea and Japan have taken a turn for the worse since South Korean President Park Geun-hye and Japanese Prime Minister Shinzo Abe took their respective offices. Over the past few months, tensions have been high over the Japanese government's insistence on reviewing the landmark 1993 apology to women forced into sexual service made by Chief Cabinet Secretary Yohi Kono. Prime Minister Shinzo Abe announced the plan to investigate the validity of the statement's contents, which was widely interpreted by South Korea and China as a way to negate or withdraw from its ramifications, since many right-wing leaders do not believe in the forced mobilization of women by Japan during the Second World War. Under international pressure, Abe said Japan would uphold the Kono Statement, but a review of its origins would continue. Japan's Yomiuri Shimbun called the Kono Statement problem-plagued when it reported on the results of the government's investigation this week. While Japan says it will uphold the statement, it noted the statement was made with input from South Korea on the specific wording used and witness testimonies were not verified. Quote, the results of our investigation indicate how, for quite a long period of time, the Japanese and Korean governments worked closely together in coordinating the content of the statement. End quote. This was made by former Prosecutor General Takade Keiichi, who headed the panel. Seoul has lashed out at Japan, calling the move a watering down of the statement and political sleight of hand. Some editorialists have called the evaluation part of a general trend of historical revisionism under the administration. Former Japanese Prime Minister Yukio Hatoyama said, In Japan, a prolonged economic stagnation has resulted in the political climate veering to the right. Shinzo Abe must show courage in recognizing the country's wartime atrocities, which would be the first step toward mending badly frayed relations with South Korea and China. He continued, In order for this to be possible, the first step is for the Japanese leader to have the courage to look squarely in the facts of history. South Korea is currently preparing evidence to refute the panel's findings. This latest development is sure to quash any hope for discussions on further compensation for the comfort women that Seoul is seeking. What do you think is the best course of action for South Korea and Japan to effectively bury the hatchet and emerge as allies in East Asia? Please share your thoughts on this issue in the comments on Facebook or Twitter. You can find us at facebook.com slash Asian News Weekly or follow at Asian News Weekly on Twitter. Links to the sourced articles will be made available at asiannewsweekly.net. For Asia Now, I'm Steve Miller. Asia Now is licensed under a Creative Commons Attribution Non-Commercial No Derivatives 4.0 International License.